Hey, welcome back to this channel. In this video, we're going to talk about integrals of periodic functions. Integrals of periodic functions. Okay. Remember, we are talking about Fourier series and we are trying to introduce the concept of periodic functions. Okay. So, this time around, we're going to talk about the integrals of periodic functions. The functions we are talking about here are those of sines, cosines, and their combination. And the integration is over a single period from negative pi to positive pi. All right. So let's go through some of them, the integrals of some periodic functions. The first integral we are going to consider is the integral of dx from negative pi to pi. Okay, this is actually 1 dx. Okay, so the integral of dx is x. Remember the rule of integration. 1 can be written as x to the power of 0. So the, the rule of integration says add 1 to the power divided by what? 1. So this is x to the power of 1 over 1, which is x. So the integral of dx is actually x. We are integrating from negative pi to pi. So, let's plug in the upper and lower limit. Pi will enter for x. We have pi minus. Minus pi will now enter. That will be what? Minus pi. And what would this be? This is plus. Minus minus will give us a plus. Pi plus pi is 2 pi. Alright. That is it. So, the second integral we are considering is the integral from negative pi to pi of cos nx dx. Yes. So what is the integral of cos nx dx? The integral of the cosine function is actually the sine function. Okay, so we have sine nx all over n. Remember, take the integral of this and divide by the derivative of nx as n. Now, it's the derivative of nx with respect to x. Okay? So, the integral of course nx ds is actually sine nx all over n. The integration is from negative pi to pi. Okay, so pi we enter for x. We then have sine n pi. This is pi all over n minus sine minus pi will now enter. That what minus n pi all over n. It's actually going to give us a zero. Yes, everything here will give us zero. But let's see. One over n is common. I can bring one over n out. One over n into this is sine n pi minus trigonometry says that sine minus x is equal to minus sine x. That is to say, sine minus n pi is equal to minus sine n pi. The minus outside will intersect with this one to give us a plus. We now have sine n pi. Okay? Sine n pi is always zero for all n, whether positive or negative. So, this is zero. This is zero. Zero, zero. Everything here will give us zero. We could have as well cancelled it out from here, but it's still okay. So the next integral we are considering now is the integral of sine nx dx from negative pi to pi. So what is the integral of sine nx dx? It is actually minus cos minus cos nx upon n from what? Negative pi to pi. Minus pi to pi. Okay, let's go ahead now. Pi we enter for x first. That will be minus. Okay, let us bring 1 over n out. 1 over n. So we have 1 over n into minus cos nx from negative pi to pi. So this is 1 over n into this. Pi we enter for x. We have minus cos n pi minus minus pi will now enter that will be what minus cos minus n pi 
You get the point. Pi entered. That was n pi. Minus pi will enter now. To now be n times minus pi minus n pi. Okay, so this is it now. We have 1 upon n into minus cos n pi minus. Minus minus is a plus. Cos minus n pi is actually equal to cos n pi. That's what trigonometry says. It says that cos minus x is equal to cos s. Unlike for sine minus x. Okay? This is different. So the minus will actually disappear. So what would this give us? Minus cos n pi plus cos n pi is 0. This will give us 0. Everything is 0. 0 times 1 upon n is 0. The fourth integral we are considering now is the integral of cos squared nx dx from minus pi to pi. So what I want to do now is I want to reduce cos squared nx. Okay? Now, this is what trigonometry says. Cos a plus b, which is the cosine of a sum, is equal to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. Just follow me. It means that cos a plus b, I want to remove, I want to change the b to a now. It's not because a cos a minus sine a sine a. Which is equal to cos a cos a is cos squared a. Alright? Sine a sine a is what? Sine squared a. So cos 2a. That's true. a plus a is 2a. So cos 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a. I want to write this left hand side in terms of cosine only. I want to remove the sign. So remember that intrigue sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to 1. That means sine squared a is equal to 1 minus cos squared a. In place of sine squared a now, I'm going to write cos squared a minus in bracket 1 minus cos squared a. Alright? So this is it. Minus minus will give us a plus. Okay? Take note. So cos squared a plus cos squared a is 2 cos squared a minus times this will give me minus 1. That is to say cos 2a is equal to what? 2 cos squared a minus 1. So if I should make cos squared a the subject of the formula, I'll be having this. Cos 2a, the minus 1 will cross and turn to a plus 1, equal to what? 2 cos squared a. So, dividing both sides by 2, these two will actually live here, and we have this. So, it means that cos squared a is equal to cos 2a plus 1, all over 2. Now, what we are concerned with is cos squared nx. So, what it means that, let us replace a with nx. It will now be cos squared nx equal to, in place of a, we are writing nx. Cos 2nx plus 1 upon 2. So, everything here, cos squared nx, will be replaced with this. That is just the point. Alright? So, this is equal to what? The integral from negative pi to pi of this cos 2nx plus 1 upon 2dx. And so, let's integrate. Okay? We have, I want to split it now. Okay? This is simply the integral from negative pi to pi. I can bring this 1 over 2 out. 1 over 2. I'm integrating cos 2nx plus 1 with respect to what? x. So this is 1 over 2 into the integral of cos 2nx dx is sine 2nx over 2n. Okay? Sine 2nx all over 2n. Remember, 
If you integrate the cosine function, you are going to obtain the sine function. Then divide by the derivative with respect to x of 2nx. That's actually 2n. And the integral of 1 with respect to x is what? Is x. So we have plus x from what? Negative pi to pi minus pi to pi. Now, I want to write this integral like this. 1 over 2 into sine 2nx over 2n plus x. Now, it is from negative pi to pi, from negative pi to pi. I'm still correct. Remember when, when we evaluated this before, in the first integral, it was 2 pi. So this is it now. 1 over 2 into plug in pi for x here. Now the sine 2n pi over 2n. Okay. Then plug in minus pi. Minus sine minus 2n pi. All over what? 2n. And this is equal to what? 2 pi. 2 pi. Okay, actually, everything here is equal to zero. Yes, sine 2 n pi is zero. Sine minus 2 n pi is still zero. Okay, I told you earlier. So everything here is zero. So we are having just 1 over 2 into 2 pi, which is equal to what? 2 cancel 2, we have pi left. That is to say that the integral of cos squared nx dx from negative pi to pi is pi. So let's see the next integral. The integral of sine squared nx dx from negative pi to pi. Remember to hit on the subscribe button, like the video, and share it with your friends and your classmates as well. Okay, this is number five now. The integral of sine squared nx dx from negative pi to pi. All right. Earlier on, we deduced the identity for cos um, a plus b, and we said it is what cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. Okay. We now said if a is equal to b or if b is equal to a, cos two a gave us cos squared a minus sine squared a. So, what I'm going to do now is this. I want to make this left hand side a function of sine only, no cosine. So, recall that sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to 1. So, if we make cos squared a the subject of the formula, cos squared a will be equal to 1 minus what? Sine squared a. So, in place of cos squared a here, I'm going to write this. So cos 2a is equal to 1 minus sine squared a minus this sine squared a. So this is equal to what? 1 minus, this is uh, minus sine squared a, minus sine squared a is minus 2 sine squared a. Okay? So let us make sine squared a the subject of the formula. This one will cross and turn to a minus. So we have cos 2a minus 1 equal to minus 2 sine squared a. All right? Let's divide both sides by minus 2. So divide both sides by minus 2, we are going to obtain minus 1 over 2 into cos 2a minus 1, which is equal to what sine squared a. So this is what sine squared a is equal to. But we are concerned with sine squared nx. So sine squared nx will now be cos 2nx is equal to sine squared nx. That means we replace the a with what? nx. That's the point. So in place of this now, I'm going to write this. All right. Now, if this minus enters this bracket, the cosine becomes negative. And this minus 1 becomes positive. We are going to have something like this. We have the integral from negative pi to pi. 1 over 2 will come out. Okay, 1 over 2. 
the minus we enter the bracket now, we are going to obtain plus 1 minus cos 2nx dx. Let us integrate it now. We have the 1 over 2 into the, I want to split it now. The integral from negative pi to pi of 1 dx, that's this, minus the integral of cos 2nx cos 2nx dx from negative pi to pi. Remember, we integrated 1 dx from negative pi to pi, and we got 2 pi. 2 pi minus. Let's integrate this now, okay? The integral of cos 2nx dx is 1 over 2 sine 2nx from negative pi to pi. Okay, let's simplify it. All right. So this is equal to 1 over 2 into 2 pi minus everything here will give us 0. So no need to evaluate it. So 1 over 2 into 2 pi. 2 cancel 2, so we have having pi left. So the integral of sine squared nx dx from negative pi to pi is equal to pi. All right, let's see the next integral. All right, the next integral that we're going to consider now is the integral from negative pi to pi of cos mx cos nx dx. Okay, this is the trig identity to reduce this. Cos a cos b is equal to 1 upon 2 into cos a plus b plus cos a minus b okay well i will not uh, prove it i'm not going to prove it anyway but you can actually work it out on your own it's going to be a little bit lengthy going through the steps okay but this is what it is equal to this is minus pi to pi cos mx cos nx dx the integral of this from negative pi to pi is equal to this. It is equal to pi when m is equal to n. Alright? And it is equal to zero when m is not equal to n. So this is what it is. Also, the integral from negative pi to pi of sine mx sine nx is t equal to this that is pi when m is equal to n and zero when m is not equal to n so let us see the last one the last integral we are considering here is the integral from negative pi to pi of cos mx sine nx dx okay so this is actually equal to zero both when m is equal to n and when m is not equal to n the integral of this is zero all right this is it for integrals of periodic functions okay we are still talking about Fourier series i hope you enjoyed the video keep supporting by subscribing to this channel like the video and share it to your friends and to your classmates i'll see you in the next one